Welcome back to the Woodworking Shed. In today's project, we'll be making this. This is a artistic piece. It's not meant to have any function other than to look nice or to be hung on a wall, that kind of thing. It's made from beach and it, you can see that I've got some reactive paint on there and there's some coloring and some other bits and pieces as well. So if you're interested in seeing how this was made, keep watching. So this project is going to be trying to turn an ancient relic of a shield. Um, never done anything like this before, and I actually thought that I had a pretty original idea with doing this. And then having watched through Martin Saban's Swiss videos, I discovered that he has done something very, very similar. Um, so I thought, well, I'd still go ahead and do it. Mine is slightly different. I'm not copying directly, but I will put a link down to his video uh, underneath as well so that you can check out his video as well. I'm sure his will be much better. But anyway, to start things off, I've got this 10 inch piece of beach. It's 10 inches by two inches and I've mounted it on a screw chuck and trued it up. I've also put some lines on here. Now these lines are going to be the different sections that I want to turn. So the idea is, is this first piece here, where you might also be able to see, I've had a bit of a play around with the texturing tool. This is gonna be a dome on the front. And then this section here will be flat. And then this section here will curve around in a radius around the outside. So I'm gonna lose this, this line. Um, so I need to just quickly take uh, a measurement and see where it is. So it's about 35 mil from the edge. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna take this lot down, uh, probably about an inch, and then I'll round this off and then come back and do this. So here we go. So now that I've got this section back to where I want it to be, I'm gonna reapply that mark that I had at 35 degrees, uh, sorry, 35 millimeters. Hopefully you'll be able to see here that this circle here is the area that I want to be the start of the, of the radius on the dome. So that's gonna come down and then follow th down through into that line. And you see we've already started the profiling, um, but I just need to accentuate that more. And now I've got this line back on, I can now start to round this off. And this is gonna go all the way to the back. So it's gonna be completely radiused on the outside. Probably still had a couple of catches then um, doing that. Uh, that was not ideal. Um, improper use of the tool completely. Um, but I think I got there in the end. So right, that section's rounded off. So I've got my flat section. So I need to create this dome at the top. Okay, so that's the main shaping done. Um, so we've got the big dome here, and there's a little bit of a recess here. Um, not overly sure I'm happy with that. Maybe I might go down a little bit further. Uh, then we've got the flat, and then it curves around to the outside. What I'm gonna do now is sand, um, and then I'll apply some texture. So that's all the sanding done now. Um, I've sanded it down to uh, 320. So now I'm gonna get the texturing tool out. I'm gonna try and put some spiraling on this dome. At least that's the plan. Let's see how it goes. All right. Turn the lathe right down. All right, it's running about 700 and I've got this set at 
okay. Okay. Well, it's textured it, but not quite what I was looking for. Um, let's try something slightly different. That's more like it. That's more what I was looking for. Okay, so I'm going to set this now just over at zero. I'm going to try and plant something with that back a bit on this front here. <laughs> Okay, that slipped right at the end, um, but I really like that pattern. That's pretty good. Right, so let's just burnish that with some shavings. Now it looks like I've caught the tool just a little bit on this edge, um, just in a couple of places, just here. I don't know if you'd better see that. So I'm going to have to re-sand that bit. But other than that, I'm really happy. The next thing that I want to do with this is scorch this edge so that when I apply some colour it, it's got a bit of a really dark area to it here. I'm also hoping that the edge is going to actually char a little bit which I think will give it a bit more of an artistic uh, bent to it. Um, so <clears throat> I've cleaned down the lathe, got rid of as much of the dust as I could. Okay, um, right I think I might have to turn it in my hand. I'm just going to leave that to cool down. Now that this is cooled down, um, I'm going to apply some intrinsic earth just to the outside. So just get a bit on the tissue. little bit around the outside. Let me just put the lathe on for this. Get the lathe to do the turning for me. Alright, I'm just going to apply a little bit of burnt orange as well. And just a smoosh on of the red flame. Rub that all in. Now the next thing that I want to do is apply some gold reactive paint to the centre section. So I've got this stuff from 10 Seconds Studio, which again is available from Hampshire Sheen. And oh, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out onto this sea sponge. I've not used this copper one before. Let's see how this goes. Okay. 
Well, a little bit seems to go quite a long way. Right, let's put a little bit more on. I'm going to try and get it all into the little the texture. I also want to apply some bronze, so I'm just going to use the other end of the sea sponge. Now, I'm not too worried about where I've got the bronze and the copper overlapping. I intend to uh, do a line in there uh, anyway with the tool, just to, so I'm just going to take the edge off, um, which will run it back to bare wood. And I'm going to do the same this end as well. So, okay, now I'm just going to leave all that to dry. So I've left this to dry now for about three hours, um, and it's, yeah, dry to the touch. So now what I'm going to do is go back over it with another coat of the paint. But this time, oh, I must remember to shake it. This time what I'll be doing is just splodging it. Um, I won't be looking for any even coverage, just want to put it on in a few places. Oh, really should have put gloves on for that. Now I'm going to take the, the Verde Patina Spray and just Spray it. And looking at the way that that's dripping down, I probably should have taken it off. Off of the lathe. So let's just do that quickly. And I'll leave that to sit to dry again. So now we are after I've uh, left that all to dry and you can see that all of the, uh, the patinering has uh, really come out. It's all really reacted really well. <coughs> I have to confess that off camera, some of this area here, it was just all green and I wanted some of the copper to still show through. So I went back over it uh, with just some of the copper and then didn't apply the spray again. Um, I actually wonder if that's another way of doing it is to do all of it in and then patina it all and then go back and fill in with color uh, or with with the metal but anyway i've done that with the bronze and with the copper so now what i want to do is just define this edge a little bit more and i'm going to do that uh with with the uh <coughs> i think i'm just going to use like a parting tool just to try and take a little channel out so now i've got a really crisp edge uh where the the metal paint meets the wood but I've had to take back quite a little bit here. Um, so what I'm now going to do is colour it. But I'm going to take it off of the um, I'm going to take it off of the chuck to do that because I think I might apply that with a brush. Now, just to try something a little bit different. I've got some black Indian ink here, and that is what I'm going to use to fill in. The gap. Now this might take me a little while. Okay, so now you can see that I've uh, finished applying the black Indian ink. And I could have just used uh, the intrinsic black, um, anything would have done I think for this. But I thought I'd just try it, just to be different. So now I'm going to apply some Danish oil to the outside edge. I'm going to try and do that with the with the lathe running. Now I'm trying not to get any of the Danish oil into where I've applied the black. I want to try and keep that separation. While that is drying, while that's still, all the Danish oil is still soaking in and drying, I'm going to apply um, or attach 
so these small, let me shut up to the camera so you can see it, rusty iron wooden nails. And I've, you probably see a video created um, recently where I showed you how I made these. So what I'm going to do is using the indexing system, I'm going to try place four on this bronze rim. So I'm going to use this one as a starting guide, I'm trying to work out where I want them to be. And then I can mark a circle or a dot. Now that was at one. Try and get round the dog. And my <clears throat> my indexing system goes up to twenty-four. So I want to divide it by four, which is six. Move it around to six, unlock it again. And then I can apply another one here. Around to 12, and again. Round to 18. And again. I'm going to take, now I can take this over to the, uh, to the pedal drill and just drill four small holes that I can recess the nails into. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of a little bit of glue onto this scrap board and using a paintbrush to paint the inside of these holes and then take each one of these and again using the brush Find some wood glue. Let's see if this works. Okay, and now I need to leave that to dry as well. So I think what I might just do is just give another little coat of Danish oil and then leave this overnight and come back to it tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day and I've decided that I really didn't like the rusty nails that I'd made for it. Um, so I've taken them off um, <clears throat> and I've just applied a little bit of bronze paint back over them just to try and hide them to some degree. You can still see the marks, but actually I think that kind of adds to the effect. Um, it looks like maybe bits where it's kind of reacted a little bit more. So I'm okay with that. I've also decided I don't really like this area here. Um, it's a little bit too pronounced. And I'm not overly sure I like the, the swirling pattern. So I'm going to take this bit back and do something a little different. So I've applied a texture. Not entirely sure I'm happy with it, but it's good enough for me for now. I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna try and using my airbrush, put some black paint into the texture. Then I'm gonna sand it back <coughs> and apply some color. And hopefully that will leave the black inside the, the pattern, inside the texture. Okay, so I've sanded that back, and now you can still see, you can see the uh, the pattern really stands out really well. Um, I'm I wasn't sure I liked it, but the more I'm looking at it, the happier I am with it. I think. So I'm now going to take some some color, intrinsics, ruby, and earth, and I'm just going to apply both of them to the same piece of towel. 
So a little squirt of ruby. And then a brown. And I'm hoping that that will give me a bit of a mixture of colour. Be careful I don't press in. So I don't want to go over the back too much. So in the same way as I did with the outside, I'm now going to put, uh, put, give a coat of Danish oil to the centrepiece. Now in order to tie these two bits together, I'm going to do the similar thing that I've done here with the black rim uh, ring. So I'm going to just take a little bit of the edge off here and then apply some of the more of the, the back. So all that's left to do now is apply some wax. And I'm only going to do that to this section here. I'm going to leave the centre section and obviously I'm not going to apply any wax over the, over the paint. And for this I'm going to use the Hampshire Sheen beeswax. I'm going for this because it's a more old fashioned type of a, of a wax and this is more of an old fashioned type of bowl. So, okay, slowly just move down. <clears throat> and there we have it, there's the finished piece. So, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like, leave a comment, share, subscribe. See you again soon.